everybody, it's Ron Howard, Joe Pal from Extreme Sequences, and recently I released a tutorial about low-hanging fruit on low-density props. And what I mean by that is, why haven't you created sub-models for these low-density props? You should, and I think I proved how valid a point that is. But what I didn't do, and this was brought to my attention in YouTube, was, hey, you didn't tell us how to make those. I'm like, oh, well, yeah, but do you really want a 30 minute video? Probably not. I try to keep them under nine minutes if I can, but I think this deserves enough a time and attention to create another video tutorial to show you how easily you can make these all on your own. Now, you can uh, poll the audience 50-50 or phone a friend to see if someone else already has it, and chances are they may, or you can make your own and you can make them unique into your needs. And what I mean by that is uh, they don't have to be perfect. They just have to be symmetrical, even. That's the key to this. So if you've got 10 nodes, 16 nodes, 24 nodes, 30 nodes, it doesn't matter. You can still make sub models and put those in groups and get some wonderful effects like you would from these Gilbert Engineering high density flakes. So let's get into this. First of all, you need to select it. Uh, make sure it does or doesn't have submodels. And if you click here, you can see it doesn't. If you see this little arrow here, you click on it, there's all the submodels for that prop. So with that selected, we click on our submodels. Now, the way we used to do this was really interesting. In the old days, you have to uh, you'd say, okay, I want a new submodel. We'll call this Leaf One. And you double click on this and you say, okay, here's my leaf one. I'm gonna start here, double click, double click, double click. And you put them in order because you would want this to like say, ordered selection, 25, 26, 27, 28, and go all the way around. You do that for each one of them. Uh, that's old school. You don't need to do that anymore. There's a better way. And even my buddy, pal, Eric Meyer brought this to my attention not that long ago. I didn't even know about this. And I went, well, that's pretty cool. Maybe. I just won't tell anybody I didn't know. That way they won't think I'm not some, some dummy. But it's not true. I am. And here we go. Leaf one. I'm going to make individual ones. A lot of people say, well, why don't you just create multiple rows, Ron, and put them all in here? Well, because I don't like the way the effects work when I do that. So if you want to do that, eh, go in peace. If you want to do it my way, then do it my way. Here we go. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click the first one I want. I want this one. This is the center point. I just want these leaves to go around, but I want to leave out the center. And all you have to do is just put a lasso around these and then click add leaf two. There we go. Click in here and I'll start here. One, two, three, four, five. And add leaf three. I click in here and that's the center. So one, two, Five. Add leaf four. And I always click in here out of habit. So that's one, two, three. Uh, we said not that one. So if you accidentally click one, you can delete it in here or you can double click on the dot and it deletes it. So one, two, three, four, five. And if you're not sure, you can always go back. Did I put five on leaf three? One, two, three, four, five. I did. Leaf two, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Yep, so far they're all looking good. Now it's time to add leaf five. And we'll start here. One, two, three, four, five. Add leaf six. And the last one, here we go. One, two, three. Now I can lasso all of these, but what you have to be careful with is, will it put it in order? If you've got a line that goes straight up like spokes, you can start from the bottom and lasso straight up and it should put them in order, but you have to check your work. This should go 22 to 23. So that worked out fine. Let me double click on these. Let me get rid of these Oops. and this one. Look what happens when I go backwards. It still worked okay. Do not take it for granted that this will put it in the correct order. So sometimes it's faster and more uh, effective if you just double, if you just click or, you know, lasso around each one. So, okay, so we're done with that. And by the way, it didn't keep that name. So I wanna make sure I change that to leaf six and I'll click in here and we're done with that. So let's do another one, let's do arm. So we'll do arm one. And this is sort of interesting because you get to decide how you want this to look. 
you could start here, go here and go up and kind of just create like this little, you know, like a question mark. And that would work fine. Or you could start before it and go up and go to the question mark. Completely up to you. So let's do something different. We'll see how this looks. Why don't we take this, 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 and we're gonna do the same thing all the way around. And we'll leave one alone. And then we're gonna add arm two. And let's go, we'll go back one, center, and then all the way around. I've not done it this way before. This is, I haven't created this particular submodel, including that one. So we're gonna see what it looks like. We're gonna add arm three. Beautiful, so that's one, two, and we're gonna go back one. What's important for some of these is not to have uh, these touch at the same time. So in other words, this one, when this arm's going, it has, it's not touching this. So I would never go all the way around and have two of these selected at the same time. Okay, let's go arm four. That can cause problems. One, two, three, four. We're gonna go back one. Here we go. Making quick work of this. Just using the lasso tool. I think by this point, you can probably start to appreciate the time it takes to do some of the more complicated high density models. And one, two, three, there we go. We are on arm five, and now we're gonna add arm six. There we go. And this is the last one. We go back one to the center, straight up and around the hook and leave one off. Okay, that looks good. So we'll just check this. We'll go arm one, we look at it. That looks good. Two, three, four, five, six. They look pretty consistent to me. And we click OK and save. And while the model is selected, go ahead and click on the little uh, chevron button here. Looks like a triangle. And let's put the leaves in a group. And here's the cool thing. If you already have submodel groups that exist for other flakes or other like-minded models, it's as simple as right-clicking and add, adding the selection to a group, or you can create a new group. So we already have a group. We're going to add this to the, let's put this in the spokes for this one, for the leaves, and click OK. Let's take the arms, right-click after you select them, add selections to existing group, and we'll put this in the appropriately titled arms group, and click Save. Now we can create an animation sequence and see what it looks like. So we're gonna go to our handy dandy single strand tool here. Okay, so here we go. Look at that, check it out. We've got this in the all spokes for each of these models, the three Gilbert engineering models and the Boscoyo 48 inch, uh, or I should say 24 inch 48 node flake. And this looks pretty cool. I kind of like that. that, that's cool, that works for me. And then let's just go check this out for the, uh, where do we go here? We got the outlines, let's go to our arms. We'll just arrow this up twice and take a look at the arms. And this is the new version of the arms which we've never done before. So we started on this little outside part here. That's pretty cool. And again, you know, I like the test with the uh, handy dandy spirals to see what it can do. We'll speed this up a little bit. Let's give this just red and blue. Yeah, that's just really super cool. Yep. So again, the point of this really was to show you how to create submodels quickly in here. Hope this was helpful, folks. Talk to you later. See ya.